And let's all stand together. And let's begin like we always do. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we gather for such a joyful occasion and to prepare our hearts to really receive Jesus anew for the first time. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And you may all be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from the Book of Kings. Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard to be my vegetable garden, since it is close by next to my house. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or, if you prefer, I will give you its value in money. Naboth answered him, the Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral heritage. Ahab went home disturbed and angry at the answer Naboth the Jezreelite had made to him. I will not give you my ancestral heritage. Lying down on his bed, he turned away from food and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said to him, Why are you so angry that you will not eat? He answered her, because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you a vineyard in exchange. But he refused to let me have his vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, A fine ruler over Israel you are indeed. Get up, eat, and be cheerful. I will obtain the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite for you. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and having sealed them with a seal, sent them to the elders and to the nobles who lived in the same city with Naboth. This is what she wrote in the letters. Proclaim a fast and set Naboth at the head of the people. Next, get two scoundrels to face him and accuse him of having cursed God and king. Then take him out and stone him to death. His fellow citizens, the elders and nobles who dwelt in his city, did as Jezebel had ordered them in writing through the letters she had sent them. They proclaimed a fast and placed Naboth at the head of the people. Two scoundrels came in and confronted him with the accusation, Naboth has cursed God and king. And they led him out of the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent the information to Jezebel that Naboth had been stoned to death. When Jezebel learned that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Go on, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you, because Naboth is not alive, but dead. On hearing that Naboth was dead, Ahab started off on his way down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord Jerusalem Praise the Lord Jerusalem Praise the Lord Jerusalem Praise the Lord 
Jan Ru Salam Glorify the Lord O Jerusalem Praise God O Zion for he has strengthened the bars of your gate. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. granted peace within your border with words of finest sweet he fills you he sends forth his command to the earth and swiftly runs runs his word praise the Jerusalem Praise the Lord Jerusalem He has proclaimed His word to Jacob His statues and His ordinances to Israel He is not done thus for any nation. His ordinances he is not made known to them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Jerusalem Praise the Lord Jerusalem Hallelujah 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 Lamp to my feet is your word, a light to my path. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, be in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, Turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand him your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This bread, if you eat this bread, you will live forever. Nobody lives forever. Everybody dies. Nothing lasts. Everything passes away. Even the great civilizations are just ruins at best. And in a million years, they'll just be a thin layer of, of whatever, uh, in the geological record. That's the Gospel of John. 
John teaches that nothing lasts, nothing's real because nothing lasts, and nothing remains. But John says today, if you eat this food, you will remain. If you eat this food, you will last. If you eat this food, you'll live forever. Wow, how cool is that? Because I'm looking over here at these folks, and I eat their food, you know? They got good food over at U.S. Family. It's just down the road. I'll give you an advertisement. It's down the road. We have our staff meetings there. And I tell you, that salad with that homemade ranch dressing, that's good stuff. And that beef and cheese thing you make, oh my gosh, to die for, right? With all those onions and all that yummy stuff. Uh, or, or just bacon and eggs, right? Over easy. Uh, you know my diet over there. That's, those are the things I always get. And they make pies. They make wonderful pies and cakes and all that. But if you eat that food, I'm telling you, it's good. You're still going to die. No matter what. You eat that food, you're still going to die. But this food, you eat this food, yeah, and you're eating God. You're eating God and you become divine. We are changed into God's nature because we're partaking of God's very nature. And so I want to just talk about two words to you today, and I want to tell you a little story. I want to tell you a little story, right? You know why? Because it's a story about a little girl your age, a little girl your age, yeah, and yours too. Uh, let me tell you the story first because it'll get you listening. So the story is about a little girl named Emily. My mom was a nanny for Emily, and so from the, almost the day she was born, they hired my mom to watch this little girl, like in Rochester Hills or something. And so my mom would go there every day and watch her and just take her all over. She raised her. When little Emily turned six years old, they moved to Florida. Now Florida is, is just a long ways away, so my mom hasn't seen her in like a couple years until Emily calls her on the phone when she's eight, and she says, Nanny. My mom's like, Emily. And she's, Nanny, I'm going to receive First Communion. Will you come down and be with me when I receive First Communion? And my mom was like, yes, I would love to. And the parents own airplanes, so they, they, they flew up the airplanes and they picked up my mom and flew her back to Florida just so she could be with Emily on her First Communion. How cool is that? And so my mom bought a present for Emily. I hope you all get a present uh, for your First Communion. So my mom bought a present, but she wanted to tease Emily a little bit. So she said, Emily, is it okay if a little girl who's receiving First Communion gets a gift? And Emily just about blew my mother away. You see, my mom's not Catholic. She doesn't believe all the things we believe about Jesus being really present in this wonderful sacrament, this miraculous sacrament. She didn't believe it. I'm a convert myself, so I converted. I'm the only one in my family that converted. So my mom's not Catholic, and she said, can a little girl receive a gift for First Communion? And little Emily just said, out of the mouth of babe, she said, oh, yes, nanny. I get to receive the best gift of all. I get to receive Jesus. And then I can come back next week and receive Jesus again. And then I can come back my whole life and keep receiving Jesus. My mom says, that little girl almost converted me on the spot. What a beautiful story. You get the best gift of all today. You get to receive Jesus. You get to receive eternal life. You get to receive the real presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to just talk about two words, and those two words are remembrance. Remembrance. Do this in memory of me. And this memory doesn't mean a memory in our head. Yeah, we want to remember in our head, but what it means is relive. Relive this. Remember it by bringing it back together and reliving it. And so uh, what that means is we have to dedicate ourselves, all of us adults, and these little ones, we have to train them how to do this, to live lives of remembrance. Because the very first reading you read, the first word was remember. 
Remember when you came out of the Egypt in through the desert. Remember all that God was doing there and how God fed you with food that your, your, uh, your uh, ancestors, but was unknown to them. This food's unknown to some, but it's known to us. It's the food of eternal life. And so it says, remember, then it said later in that same reading, first reading, it said, don't forget. Don't forget. So the positive word is remember. The negative side of it is don't forget. Remember and don't forget. Live lives of remembrance. We live Eucharistic lives. What's that mean? Here's, here's what the Eucharist is right there. This is this sacrifice right here, and Jesus gives his life away. And we're called to imitate Jesus, to live in such a way where I give my life away. You give your lives away a way to live for other people, to live a life given away, a life of love, a life of service. Jesus said, uh, you know, it's not just an example what I'm doing here. Uh, I want you to live it out too. If I wash feet, you wash feet. If I give my life, you give your life. If I live this way, you walk the way that I showed you. Yeah, so we're eating a whole way of life. We're eating a remembrance and we remember it every day. How? Not up here. We remember it by living it out. We live that out every day. You pray for me. Today's uh, 17 year anniversary. I was ordained a priest in the Catholic Church 17 years ago today. And so I want you to pray for me that I will live a life of remembrance. I will live out this life serving you and loving you and, and being this for you. And as you pray for me uh, to be able to do that for you, pray for you that you'll be able to do that for your families, for your friends, for your, the places you work, the places you go in the world. Yeah, remembrance. And the last word I want you to, re to know is one. We're going to take one loaf, one cup, and we're all going to eat out of it, and it's going to make us one. We are all made one in Christ Jesus. So this is the body of Christ, but now this is the body of Christ. And each of you individually, our temples of the Holy Spirit, and me too, and, and all of us together make up the body of Christ. There's many of us, there's many of us, but just like in your body, there's many cells, there's many parts, there's a hand, there's a foot, there's an eye, there's an ear, and the hand can't say to the ear, I don't need you. No, because it's all one body. And if a body, if the cells in a body communicate well, I was looking at sodium. One of my friends got really sick because the sodium got out of his body. His cells couldn't communicate because of that. When our cells commune together, like communion, communicate, commune, communion, communicate, then that body's healthy and it thrives. But when the cells fight, when they're divided, there's division, that's sickness. You know what we do when our cells fight one another? We get chemotherapy. We get radiation therapy because it's a pretty serious thing. And so you're the body of Christ, so we're called to be one. The Holy Spirit makes us all one. We don't allow division or, or any of that sort of thing. And so teach this, these things to your kids. Teach them, teach them unity. Teach them how to be one. Even our nation, one nation, under God, indivisible. How much more should I church be one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one, one, one. And so, and then remembrance, lives of remembrance. This is our faith. It's the best gift of all, Emily said. How many of you believe it's the best gift of all? Yeah, we do, don't we? And that's what we're going to do now, and that's our faith. And what a wonderful day just to see you all again, to see all of you. I drove by your place today coming to work, and I thought, man, if I ate, I would go there. Uh, but uh, I fasted today, so this would be what I ate. I fasted today, so I would eat this. And I'd live forever. In your hearts, do the same thing. What a wonderful, wonderful gathering. And what a wonderful faith we have.
stand with me and let's offer our hearts, let us offer our lives to be lives lived in remembrance, always, every day lived out. And Lord, as we offer our lives in remembrance, we offer these prayers and petitions for our church and our world, but especially for our kids and our families here today. For the Holy Church, as she feeds us with the word of God and the Eucharist, which gives us eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. For the parents, priest, catechist, teachers, and all who help prepare Jane, Connor, and Christian in their first confession and Holy Communion. May God bless them and bestow upon them the gifts they need for happiness and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For Jane, Connor, and Christian, who today will receive Jesus in the Eucharist for the first time, may they experience true communion with him in their hearts and live faithfully as his disciples their whole lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For all leaders, especially those in government and in the church, in particular for Pope Francis, Bishop Earl Boyer, and Father Steve, that they may be always open to your Holy Spirit to lead and serve your people, let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may each of us be grateful for the gift of the Eucharist and experience with faith and love the encounter with our Lord Jesus in Holy Communion at every Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. And we bring all these prayers to you, our loving Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the preparation of the gifts. And now stand with me and pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice here and the sacrifice you make in your hearts to walk in the way of Christ, that those sacrifices may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by his sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one, one bond of love. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
please kneel as we continue our prayer. If you're not able to kneel, you may be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks and praise, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Earl, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. He said, Lamb 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Dona nobis pacem. Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, be safely to you.
worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. And dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored. Jesus come in glory Lord Jesus come in glory Lord Jesus come in glory Lord we remember you and remembrance us to worship and as we worship you our worship leads to communion we respond to your invitation we respond to your invitation we remember you. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever.